Thanks. Well, I'm certainly happy to report that the officer is doing well. He's in good spirits. His wife is here. They're having a conversation now. I certainly want to thank the superintendent of the state police, Marion County Sheriff, uh, John Layton and then Superintendent Carter for all their work. They're helping us backfill some positions right now. We have approximately 20 officers that we want to talk to that either were involved in this incident or witnessed it. So it's a long process, but we could not continue to provide safety in the city without their support. I also want to thank our governor who called to talk to our officer tonight to make sure that he was okay. Uh, we're getting a lot of outpouring of support from the community, from individuals here at the hospital, and we're very grateful. But the officer's in good condition. We'll know. Uh, later today if he's going to need to have surgery, uh, but the doctors are still examining. Right now he has a wound in the lower extremities, and there's a possibility that he has a graze wound from a bullet on his head. Chief, my understanding is that there was a good Samaritan who, upon the shooting of the officer, ran to the officer and was able to at least render first aid until your officers were able to come and help. You know, Rafael, I don't know. I don't have all the briefing on what happened there. I know that uh, there was a lot of going on throughout the city with this was a very long pursuit and involved a lot of our officers. Uh, they did everything to mitigate risk. I was personally at one of the intersections our officers were blocking and they had spike strips out. They were asking people to get back in their cars, be safe. And this is something I think is we need to talk about as a community and social media. When police officers are on an emergency run, when police officers are out of their car obviously looking for weaponry, making sure that they have their cars in the right position. It's not a good time to get out of your car and try to get footage for social media. It endangers citizens. It endangers our officers as well. We saw some of that, unfortunately, today. And Chief, let's talk about the, the, law, the, the, the number of bullets. I mean, this thing went on for a while. It wasn't just from one block to the next. This went through half, half the city. Uh, can you speak to that gun battle that went on this afternoon? It appears early, and this preliminary information, that this individual was firing at our officers early from the pursuit and throughout the pursuit at different times. We'll know more as we go back and piece this together. We covered a lot of miles most likely. And then there was some gunfire at the end, but they're still at the scene process and it's going to be some time before we really understand all the officers involved and it's going to be numerous officers and understand how many rounds were actually shot. This was a young officer. Can you talk to us about your message? They tweeted out a photo of you talking with the other members on the force. Your message to them and to him about this incident and his recovery? Well, that's one of the reasons we spend so much time training. Uh, remember, we hire people, we put them through an extensive background, then we put them through training. We even lose people in training. Then we put them on the street and they go through training. So it's an exhaustive uh, training procedure. The reason we do that is this very reason. When you're by yourself in a police car, you're the police department. doesn't matter if you're a rookie or a veteran at that point. You've got a lot of responsibilities. That's why training is so important. And if you look at what happened tonight, and right now, I am not aware of any accidents that occurred. I'm not aware of any citizens being injured. I'm aware of our officers has been injured. I'm aware of the fatality of the suspect, and I'm aware of another officer that has some type of minor injury during this uh, pursuit. But that's it. No citizens were harmed. Uh, no individuals were struck by any air bullets. This is, uh, this is something we're very thankful for and very grateful for. So, Chief, your message then to your department that every day has to face this possibility. Um, what do you tell these officers to reassure them that, a, that the public is behind them, that you're behind them, that what they're doing is a double cause? Well, that's we talk about that in recruit school. I go out and speak to recruits. I did that when I was director of public safety. I do it now. And I tell them that if they're not willing to lay their life down for another human being, then this isn't a job for them. And each and every day, even with the national discussions going on, officers put that uniform on every day to go out and work. And by that small act, they demonstrate to the public that they're willing to lay their life down. This officer stood behind between chaos and our citizens tonight. He took a bullet for the citizens of this community, and as a result, he kept a lot of people safe. What Usually you after. About the other officer who was injured, the nature uh, of that injury. Don't have a lot of details. Just heard it was a, a small injury. I'm going to get more on that later. Remember this. This happened quickly. Our concern, obviously, at the scene, getting the resources to continue to patrol, and the officer at the scene. But Kendall and the POs will give you more information later. Not shot, though. So no, not at this time. I've not been aware. We're just aware of one. I don't believe so. I think he probably got treatment at the scene. But Kendall will send some other uh, information out as it becomes available, and we'll hopefully have another briefing sometime tomorrow morning when we get more of the information from tonight's investigation. Chief, so often after these incidents, your officers are ready to go back to work, whether they're ready or not. Did this officer indicate to you that despite his injury, that he's ready to put back that uniform and return to the streets once he's cleared by the department? Absolutely. He's resolute. He's in good spirits. Uh, but we said, hey, slow down. Let's make sure you're okay. Let's heal up. Let's take care of your family. This is a tremendous toll on the family. 
when you have a loved one injured like this. It's a tremendous toll on your beat partners. So we're going to be monitoring them, but certainly anybody's involved in a critical incident like this has to have time off, not just for the physical wounds, but also those mental wounds that you get from police, uh, policing in the city and dealing with your family as well. You said he's married. Does he have any children? I'm not aware of that. I will tell you, obviously, this is the second officer we've had fired in just a handful, or let me go again. This is the second officer we've had shot in just a handful of days. Uh, the first officer was shot trying to save a suicidal subject. He was, uh, he was fortunate enough to able to save that person, unfortunate to be shot. And then we also had the officers home. And I think people forget that each and every year in this city, 700 of our 1,600 officers are injured while working in Indianapolis. And what we're seeing is more and more people, especially since 2014, more and more of our officers assaulted with firearms. Chief, what do you say about the gentleman who, during what was a traffic stop, refused to early reports, refused to exit the vehicle, and then began what was a long gun battle. I mean, what, what does that say about the state of, of affairs? You often talk about what's going on the streets. So what does it say about this individual at this point? We don't know. I mean, obviously, you have to wonder why a simple traffic stop, he escalated it to a, a, a deadly situation for our citizens and for uh, our officers. That's something we're just going to have to investigate. You never know, but it shows how dangerous police work can be. One minute you're making a simple traffic stop, the next minute you're involved in a gun battle. Things can change instantaneously in this work, and it's difficult. What you've often said is that there are no such things as a routine or simple traffic stop it's anymore. It's often the right? most dangerous. Kind of right. There, there is nothing that's uh, routine about policing, especially with some of the attacks we've seen against officers across the nation right now. Thank okay. you all so much. Thank you.